come to Stirling to meet Alan Waldron of Stirling Bagpipes, who is well known for both making and repairing bagpipes. How you doing Alan? Hi, good. Yourself? Good, good. Hey, this is a set of bagpipes that's came in to me uh, by a customer. They've been lying in an attic for the past 25 years. It was their grandfather's set. They're a little bit of a, a mishmash, a mongrel set if you like. Um, these stocks are made by RG Laurie, Glasgow. Uh, this is probably uh, Henderson top section and I've made new parts for them. So that's a, a replica of to match up with the top sections of the drones and that's obviously a vast improvement from that what he has here. Good. So can we go through and watch the the lathe and just making one of the pieces um, replacing okay. one yeah. of the pieces yeah. and go yeah. from there? First thing I've got to do is, is crisscross to find the centre of the piece of wood. Mm -hmm. So Inside that little box, this exact centre, am I going to? So that's the exact centre of the piece of wood, and we'll now put it in here like this. This has gone round at 2,500 revolutions per minute. Turning it into the round, this is called roughing down here. So I uh, first thing to do is to to make it round, and then we put a hole through the centre here, and then I leave it to dry for a minimum of one year. Um, the, uh, that will allow any bending of the wood or any cracking to happen in the time that it's not kiln dried. It's just dried with time. And it's important because if you make it too fast, the ferrules can shrink and fall off. The ferrules in the wood expand and contract at a different rate. So the ferrules can fall off. If you make it slower then, and allow the, the wood time to dry, then uh, that's much better for the quality of the bagpipe. Mm -hmm. So you do this all in stages? You do. Uh, and I, I don't do one at a time of these. You might do ten of this part. Mm -hmm. And then 10 of the next section, and there are 14 parts, wooden parts, plus the bag cover cords. Um, so you leave it to dry, which is sort of what I've got here. All these are all pre-bored out, and I'll be using these next next year. I've bored them out about six months ago, and they've got another six months to sit. And that will just... There's a tenor top section. It's been lying there for more than a year. So it's drying out and it won't crack if I do it like that. So, just one minute. Now I'd like to show you how um, I'll be doing a measure in here and see if we can get the same uh, combs and beads as this one here. So I do my first one, I'm doing the bead, and after that I do a comb and a bead and it's set to about
first thing I do is do, do the first comb and then I do a comb here. Then I would, I would polish it and uh, come up to a high sheen, you know, with wax finish. So this is you, you've got a set here ready to, to go that have all been refurbished? Uh, they're getting close to it, they're a set of uh, Granger and Campbell from Glasgow and I've put on a, a new bag, cover, cords, polished them up, give them a general uh, MOT and uh, we're getting close with these, I just need to blow stick. This is this material's Catalan nickel and this is uh, African black wood with a varnish finish. And these ones are going back to Switzerland. Switzerland? Are you going to blow them up and give us a... Well, I've no finish yet. I've not, I've not <laughs> right. got in here. And, uh, if you have an old set of bagpipes, Alan Waldron is the man you're looking for, so contact Sterling Bagpipes. <laughs>